Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, this guy right here don't need no introduction. Yes, sir. I'm back in town, man. Getting down, man. Hey, this guy right here, uh, man. Uh, I can't. I, words can't explain the the music and the stuff that he done done throughout the years that affected my life and a lot of other people, man. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, man, Mr. Lee, man. Welcome back on Boss Talk 101, man, where the bosses talk. Yes, sir. What's going down? Man, hold up, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Uh, just, uh, man, just I want to thank you for always answering the call when I call you. Uh, I'm always, uh, you always looking at the page or we rocking out with each other, trying to see what each other's doing, man. So thank you so much, man. Without a doubt. Been a hell of a venture. Let's go ahead. Get it. Let's get into so, it. So, um, you know, as, as you said, you've been on our platform many times. But like for me, I'm starting my own podcast as well. And I heard you starting yours yeah. too. What's the name of your podcast going to be? It's on the track with Mr. Lee. On the track. Okay, so when have you started recording yet? I have, but I'm still tweaking it a little bit. But I'm going to start uh, probably in January. In Jan you're going to start releasing it in January? Yeah, yeah. How many interviews have you done? Uh, right now I have like five. Five? Yeah. Okay, are you, you going to plan to put it out every day? Uh, if it's, that's, that's my goal to put it out every day. But you know what? I got to salute you guys because, uh, man, there's a lot of work going to it. <laughs> you can sit down and say, yeah, I'm going to start a podcast. But, man, uh, the work to get the content, it ain't easy. To get the content and to edit. Yeah. And like we tell a lot of people, um, it's best to do it yourself because it's hard to depend on people. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. But it's easier as in like you just, all you have to do is record and pass your information on and let them do it. But... It's just hard to rely on people, like what I was saying. But um, to find the time to edit everything, especially if you have multiple cameras like we do, it's harder. If you have one camera, are you doing one camera or multiple? I'm doing multiple. That's yeah. amazing. So what was your reason for starting a podcast? Uh, I started to see the reaction I started to get on uh, Instagram mm -hmm. when I would uh, give information about the music business. And I wasn't aware of the badges on Instagram Live and all of that kind of stuff. And so one day I was giving some information out for like about 10 minutes and I made like $200. Wow. It popped up on my Instagram. I'm like, what is this? And it was badges. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me pursue this a little different and give people what they want from me. Yeah. So, you know, that's what really made made me decide to go ahead and uh, so your podcast. So your guest that you're bringing on on your podcast, is it, I um, guess that you're just going to be talking about music to educate, you know, people on different things where music is concerned or what is your goal where that is concerned? Uh, it's going to be music business, the life in the music business. I feel like uh, with all of the deaths that I've been seeing and all of the uh, comments that I've seen about people saying that being a rapper is dangerous, it's not being a rapper is not being, it's not dangerous. It's the, decision making of a rapper that's mm -hmm. dangerous mm -hmm. and I think we need more people to educate and give these young people more insight on life I'm 50 years old I've been in this music business older than some of these cats been alive you know what I mean so I know I've been there I've been in the situations they've been in whether they think I haven't or not I have and you live to tell about it yes and I'm here mm -hmm. so I'm smart enough to understand how to walk away from different situations and live to see another day and I think that we have to be more wise about decisions that we make and put the egos to the side. Egos when he said decisions that, that um, you make, are you talking about decisions in the music or decisions on how you walk, how you act, or just decisions of it, as in like content you put into the music? What is it's, it's some of it's some of every everything really. You know, what I mean, it's the content too. You got to be aware of what you speak is powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can taunt people. We're just making a song and you you really just trying to entertain. Mm -hmm. But some people don't take that as entertainment. Right. And they'll look at the look at it a different way and you have adversaries that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. And that's dangerous when you have unknown adversaries. That's true, because you don't ever <laughs> Exactly. So and then too, you know, I've been I've been living good and living at a high level for twenty five years or, mm -hmm. or more. So I, I started making money and 
having big houses and cars when I was 23. Mm -hmm. When you start getting to that type of level, certain people that you used to hang with, I don't care if you grew up with them, went to school with them, when they're still in the, in the trenches and they're in the hood, as much love as you get from the hood, you can't stay in there. Mm -hmm. You can't participate in certain things in the hood because everybody's not going to receive you in there. Right. If you want to give turkeys out, you want to do different things, you have to do that at a certain, <coughs> in a certain way, in a certain mm -hmm. level. You know what I mean? We get caught up in these fake facades that we see on TV or looking at some of the mistakes that other people make and we continue to still try to do the same mistake over and over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't go in a neighborhood where you got adversaries there. Right. Because they can sit on you. Because they're trying to prove something. Nowadays, it's, it's all about content. Yeah. Everybody's trying to create content, even if they think that they're risking their life. They're trying to create content because everybody wants to go viral. Right. And I'm like, but going viral is not going to last you forever. It's going to, you know, yes, if you are monetized at that moment, which a lot of people even aren't monetized at the moment, they go viral. You might get some money from that, yes. But otherwise from that, that's all. You're going to get, what, a month of fame? Yeah. And Man, that's it. You know, it's been real draining uh, doing a lot of stuff that pertain to this podcast. When you think about it, just thinking about what you said earlier, reflecting back on people who passed away. You know, we've had so many different people that passed on. You know, you look at even even what you said makes sense. But 50 Cent with hip hop homicide, you know, just like he can see it. Everybody can see it. How do we address it? And if we address it, will it change it? You know stuff like that. That's the that's the yeah. whole that's the situation. Um, seeing the the the, the PMB rocks the the uh, the the takeoff. You mm -hmm. know, just being in Houston and you being down in Houston, uh, uh, like like you were um, to hear that happen that night in Houston. What went over you when you heard that? Like, what did you think about? I mean, really, man. Every time I see a rapper get killed, I get triggered by you know. What I mean, losing people like Nipsey Hussle. Losing people like Big Hawk, you know what I'm saying, and even Pimp C, just the death of it, just it's triggering. Right, right, you know what I'm saying. It makes me upset. I get mad after I'm sad about it. I'm angry. Yeah, because I feel like you guys are young. Y'all got a whole life ahead of you. Right. The egotistical stuff that that's being done, the the arguing over whatever money it was, and the foolishness that of people that hang around it, around you that you don't have any control over is a detrimental situation. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Even when I look at Nipsey, I love Nipsey. I hated the fact that he stayed at that store and waited on that dude to come back. Right. And it's, it's a lack of decision making. If I'm arguing with somebody and I'd have had an argument and that cat leave, I'm not finna sit there and wait for him to come back. If I'm sitting there waiting for him to come back, I'm gonna have something in my hand. Exactly. Exactly. And waiting, and waiting on him to come back. I'm not gonna be lackadaisical about it or think that this cat can't come back with something. It's somebody. ego and it's people proving something feel like I'm bigger than, you know, like, oh no, he would never try that. He would never do yeah. that because I'm big. I, I mean, I when you when you give everything that you have to a neighborhood like Nip did, you expect the respect to be there. Mm -hmm. You expect that as a safe zone in a holy place where nothing wrong can happen in. Mm -hmm. You know, you expect that type of cover over you when you given as much as he gave and it just didn't happen it's the same thing with the takeoff thing it's it's an awful situation you know what i mean you go and you do these type of things all the time it's all regular but you never know it's one person that could be in that room with you that you don't know that can take a situation the wrong way and act unauthorized and do some things that is not cool okay can you can you basically remember a time where you might have been in a situation where you had to either a leave or de-escalate the situation in order to make sure that nothing like this would happen because you've been in the game a long time yeah. you had a lot of nights out i mean so it, just thinking back go yeah. back to some of those nights uh when you mr lee was out and the producers and everybody would party in because they just had an album release or they just had a a, a, a a somebody flew in and and you was like you know what man i'm gonna kick out here early or that time when you kicked out early and something did transpire. Anything like that you can remember? I mean, of course. I mean, you live, you go through that. You know, I, I know I, I can. I used to shoot dice. Me too. So one particular time I shot dice and I won $40,000 that night. Wow. Where was this at? It was at a studio. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say the name. No, that's all good. But uh, I won forty grand. 
You know what I mean? I came in there with like four hundred dollars. Wow. And I won forty. I didn't go back for a couple of days. And the reason I didn't go in there for a couple of days is because it was people around there that I beat and you know, I won money from and I know people get in their feelings. Yeah. I'm smart enough to know that you know what, I just won forty thousand dollars. These cats can be dumb enough to think that I might have ten or twenty thousand in cash on me and try to rob me, set me up, do whatever. So I, I, I didn't go back. Forty thousand dollars. He hidden. That mean he jumping six and eight. All they that. running mates. Uh, yo and the eleven. All that. He, all that. he own it. It, it, it little Joe. Yeah, that's hitting, four. Yeah, the four and the ten, man. That four and the ten. <laughs> if I can four out ten, I already know. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, how long did it take? For you to even to 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 win that much, cause that takes time. Too. Man, we shot dice for like twelve hours. That's what people don't understand. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, they didn't move, didn't eat, did nothing. That's nah, we was there. It was it's it was, addictive. Yeah, it was it was like started like eight hour eight o'clock in the, at night. When I left out of the building, it was sun out. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So I learned from different things like that. I watch people behavior, but you know I've been on the run for ten years yeah, when I, I was first starting told. my career. Yeah, correct. So my my uh, attention to detail of things like that was heightened. I can read people and tell when they on some shaky shit. With yeah, them, yeah. You know what I mean. So I I know how to get out of the way because I one thing about me I didn't want to I didn't want to get in an altercation where I had to hurt somebody to kill them or do some shit like that in the position that I was in. So I always was very careful about the decisions that I made and the people that I was hanging around with because it's crazy because you could be around a person that show you the most love ever in life and that one person that show you that type of love would be the same person that shoot you in the back of the head. That's correct. You know, when you mentioned 50 Cent's um, show, yeah, I thought about, cause you know, a lot of people, they have good things to say about it and some people have bad things to say about it. But when I think about even just all the deaths that's been happening, I, would, I think of the saying, you know, you can either look at the cup half full or half empty. I'm like, you can argue about all of the different situations or you can be like, okay, what is it that do I need to learn from this situation? Even the shows, he come out with the homicides, okay, and they go into detail telling you how did they get caught up in the situation. Mm-hmm. You should be knowing that, okay, I need to move differently. Yeah. If this person can be betrayed by this person, so-called allegedly, because, of course, they don't solve the case, but... Uh, it, you can learn from seeing it and be like, okay, I need to do, I need to change up. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to watch this person. Need, because I always say, God tell the Holy Spirit tells us, gives us warning. A lot of times we don't ever listen. Right. Sometimes we do. Everybody gets it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody gets a knock on their shoulder. I know that's your best friend, but they, they haven't been acting right recently. Yeah. When you're elevating, they start acting sort of exactly. jealous. But in front of your face, they smile, mm-hmm. but you get that feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So people just always ignore, oh, they're just having an off day. They're just this, 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 this. People need to take more notice of situations like you that. You have to. Yeah, Mr. Lee, so when you uh, look back at, <coughs> um, you know, um, being a part of everything that has to do with hip hop, are you proud of where you see hip hop is today for the South? I am, and sometimes I'm not. You know what I mean? Just I think creativity needs to be challenged a little bit more. It's a cookie cutter, cutter situation that we in, and the powers that be, if it's an easy sale, then they're going to jump on it. They don't care if it's detrimental to our culture, the people that we serving the music to. They don't care about that. You know what I mean? They don't care about the rap beef, rappers getting killed, killing each other. They don't care about none of that. So, I mean, as far as is the success that they having and the money that they're making, I'm absolutely incredibly excited and proud of that. But there are a lot of things that we need to change the narrative of and we need to understand how much power we have. I think people mask the vi- our vision and don't allow us to really see what type of power we really got. You know what I mean? And that's, that's a, a very huge problem because we don't have to have a bunch of controversy and disrespectful things to, to make it in this business. We don't have to have that. I think that people that in, that have those type of qualities don't have a longevity in the music anyway. When you see Scarface working with him like you did all those years, how were you guys able to detour deter a lot of the the? It wasn't he didn't have a lot of beef. Smart enough to stay out of the way. 
He was straight focused on the music. It seemed focus like you and him both yeah. were focused on the music more yeah. than the beef. Yeah, he had to be focused on the purpose. Now, it was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. He just chose not to deal with it. Right. We had a position to play. You know, when you know what your position is and you're able to remain in that position and you can thrive in that, then you stay out of the way. Lack of experience and knowledge is like a double-edged sword. Sometimes you can win. Sometimes you're going to lose. Most of the times you're going to lose because you don't know how to move in, in uncertain situations that you are that you have no capabilities to be in. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that, and they rush right into things, and they and they, and they get themselves caught up in really serious situations. They're either going to jail, you're getting killed, you're losing all of your money. It's just a whole bunch of really detrimental things that's happening, and the people are not looking at it, and they don't care. The record labels don't care about. What happens to the artist? When I was signed to rap that, they cared. They looked in on our personal situation and made sure everything was good. I had that type of support system. Right now, you don't have that. Wow. I, 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 think, I think you're hitting it on the nail. Um, when you look at, like, I talked with Lil Kiki. I, I shout out Lil Kiki. I went down there and interviewed him after you introduced me to him here on this show when I first met you, and I want to tell you thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, I also, when I went down there and linked with him, Al D linked me with him as well. It was just a wonderful thing to rock out with him. But the one thing I asked him the same thing. Like he, he said something that was profound. He said he wouldn't, mm-hmm. wouldn't, he wasn't gonna waste, you know, the music on beef. I just go back to what he told me. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't gonna put his, he wasn't gonna put that energy out mm-hmm. there like that. Yeah. Um, uh, he also talked about uh, the PMC when he did the knocking doors down. How he didn't get into the situation where he was trying to de-escalate the beef as well. He talked about the car in that song, mm-hmm. and he said Pimp, that kind of made Pimp feel a little bit like, what the hell, man? Because at the end of the day, he just did not want to uh, deal with that, you know, deal with that part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's good. Uh, when you look at Lil Kiki working with him, like what was the, what, what, what makes him different than a lot of people that you've worked with? I mean, we have a lot of longevity. We've worked for a long, long time, years and years. And, uh, you know, when you have a sincere relationship with people, you can, you have a lot of happy moments. You, get, you can have some sad ones and some of mad ones too. <laughs> of course. You know what I mean? But being in, being in a brotherhood with a person like that, and I call it a brotherhood, we able, we're always able to overcome any adversity that we had. But in the studio, we creative. We're going to work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was, it's always been a blast working with him, man. We laugh and talk all the time. And, you know, just been one of those sincere relationships that everybody should have yeah. with one person or another. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing, I, I just look at how the history is and how you, how you rocked out with him. And basically, you guys still maintain a relationship to this day. A lot of people can't say that. No. There's a lot of people that don't talk to people any longer that they work with starting out. Their, their career, you right. know that. Yeah. So how important is it to you as a, a producer and, and as an, a, a, a creative mind to, to be in a space where you can keep those long lasting relationships and grow old like Scarface said, he would thought that him and Pimp C would have grown old together. I seen him say that one time. Yeah. So how important is that to you? I mean, it's real important to me because we all had some type of struggles together. We started from the top. We spent hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and weeks and months and years in the studio working. So you can't have that type of relationship with people and it don't be sincere and it don't be real. You know, it's a handful of people that I have those situations with that I've been working with and been friends with for over 20 years. And we've been through everything. We've had misunderstandings. We had all of that. You know, even like I could tell you one story about uh, B. King. Shout out B King. Shout out B King. You would look at B King, and B King does this music, and everybody's happy, and it's clubby, and, and he does a whole bunch of things. But B King is a real super solid cat. He and I had a disagreement about something. And I ain't gonna go into detail what it was, but we had a <laughs> disagreement about something. And uh, me and this dude was was friends, and when nobody was really looking at him, I was hitting him on Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff, and we started working together. He's one of the most sincere people that I know. And he's blunt, he'll tell you exactly how he feel, whether it's right or wrong. But at the end of the day, he doesn't hold no grudges. And he's a big enough man to be like, hey man, you know what, bro, let's wrap this up and get back to where we were. That's, That's hard. Good. You know, yeah. and I and for him, I really 
I respect him even more because of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't just he, he, he was wrong. It was wrong all across the board between him and me. It wasn't just him. It was me too. But you know what I mean? When you have a, a friendship with people like that, you can overcome anything. You know what I mean? He didn't get on Instagram and be like, oh, I ain't messing with Mr. Lee no more. I ain't doing this. Mr. Lee, I, it ain't, it ain't none of that. I ain't do the same thing to him. It was respect. And I think a lot of people don't carry those type of values. And they use any type of instance to get any type of fame, any type of traction on the internet, they'll use it. But that dude, he's solid. You wow. know, he's just as solid as Slim, Kiki, and all the other cats that I've been working with for the last 20 years. He's the same way. Wow, because cause he came over, he, shout out, he, he, he'd say love the show. Uh, but the thing I do know about him as well is his creative space was a little bit different than most the way that the music sounded coming out of Houston. Yeah. He had a different way that he was trying to do it, and, and I think that was something that I feel like he had to be able to be strong and stern in his belief system to do it and not care about the backlash. Yeah, he was a pioneer. Correct. Yeah. That, 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 makes, that makes you a little bit different. Yeah, facts. Yeah, facts. <laughs> so, um, no, he, when, you, when you go back and you start to uh, reflect on uh, just the, the Scarface in the studio uh, feels that you guys did, um, I, I had Mac on the show as well, and Mac was uh, telling me about he rocked out with Scarface, and he was a big Scarface fan because, uh, you know, uh, basically – uh, he 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 came home after 21 years. He gets down there and he rocks out with him. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and I think I've clipped and put you in a clip with him on uh, on that same yeah. deal because you guys had a lot to say about Scarface. Um, do is Scarface still the best rapper alive? Forever will be, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, I, I can't. I ain't even gonna never begin a list without him on the on the top of it. He got to be on the top. Yeah, on the top. And 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 so. What okay, and I I, ain't, I hadn't got to meet him, but recently since I'd been doing boss talk, young yeah, but as a grown as an older man, I hadn't met hadn't seen him. Um, is he is he, he's a writer, right? Yeah, yeah. he's not in there. He not dropping what they call it, baby, when they go in there and what they Bars, call these young these um, young niggas to, they punching punch in. Nah, he from that. <laughs> What do you? How is it like? Like, do you think they? The the, the time has changed, man. Y'all, y'all did this. Yeah. It really was y'all. You, you niggas did this because at the end of the day, these young folks doing the knew nothing about this music stuff. If it wasn't been for people like you yeah. and Scarface and uh, Willie D and all of y'all, man. So I have to blame y'all. I I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't do it, man. But that little dude you sent over here, what was his name? Dang, the little Tango. kid. Tago, man. Tango, shout out to my boy man, Tango, what man. what the hell going on, man? How you run into that kid? Hey, man, I met him in a meeting with uh, this dude, Johnny Coco, and my guy, uh, A.V. Hall. That's my partner. So they uh, we had came out they came out to the crib, and we hung out, and I talked to him, and, you know, he has a resemblance of my son. My son, okay. he looked almost alike a little bit. That's hard. So, you know, that, that kind of threw me back. <laughs> so we talked, and uh, once I figured out everything that he had done and just his demeanor and the way he is, you know what I mean? I was like, dude, whatever I can do to help you, I'm going to help you. Wow. You know, because you, you you're an outstanding young man. You got your head on straight. You got values. You, you're really bucking the system. You don't smoke. I don't smoke. I don't drink. He don't drink. You know, he's focused about helping his family. That's just, uh, it's refreshing to be in a room with somebody like that. And you think, I'm an OG, so I'm, I've did everything that he's trying to do. But just to see him doing that in this day and time, I was like, dude, whatever I need to do to help you, I'm, I'm helping you got it. Wow. And and, and he, he definitely done worked already with Rod Wave. Yeah. And I think, was it, was it NBA Youngboy? No, Cody. Yeah, well, NBA, NBA Youngboy. Young he, he has the new single in NBA Youngboy's uh, new project. Right now? Right now. That's hard right yeah, there. That that, he the truth, man. So he's steadily working. Yeah. Man, how, how like what would you like to see that come from his his work ethic and and the people that he's striving to be? What what would you like to see come out of his career? Like would you like to see him just take it to the 31 plaques and you know what I'm saying? I want to see him take it beyond that, but the most important thing I want to see is people acknowledge his talent. Okay. Okay. I think you know I mean the money is one thing, but the work that you put in and the things that you do to help people's career, it need to be acknowledged. And I think that's the most important thing 
I want to see with him. I want to see him be a household name because he's put in the work to do it. Yeah, that's that's hard, man. Yeah, I liked his attitude, his humbleness. Yeah. You know, the being meek is something else. Man. Yeah, because so many people are so arrogant and trying to figure out ways to be known and seen instead of relaxing and letting it happen Facts. for us. So that that's hard. Uh, so you in there working with him? Does he have similarities? Is he quick to the draw? You can tell all too. that stuff. I mean, he's, he's he's like a young version of me. You know what I mean? Honest. You know that's why I took a liking to him, man. He he's gonna be greater than me though for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I gotta ask you about this, and I, you you can't get around it, and and, it, and I hate to bring it up, but um, when I seen uh, Zero being that you linked with Zero and yeah. uh, 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 Trey and all the huge, when you seen that spill out on TMZ like that, what it cause that usually never happened. I mean, it was it, it was you know what I mean to me, man. It was. I wish it had, it had never happened. I hate it happened because it's a way a, a Texas thing to where it's like. We got to keep our business. Yeah, out the I, I wish it wouldn't have never happened, and it allowed a lot of people to judge and assume what's going on between them two guys. Those guys used to be brothers and family at one point in time. Whatever issues they got, that's their issues. You know what I'm saying? I got my own issues, but I don't put them out there. I don't. I'm not finna get out there and and get to talking because some like that happened. You know what I'm saying? Me and Trey is cool. I'm, I, I I deal with Trey every day. Me and Trey talk all the time. Wow. You know what I mean? That's like my little brother. So. I don't like to see that. You know, I think it's a lot of things that, un, a lot of un, unturned stones in that situation that needed some resolution to it. Yeah. Fighting, is that the key to it? I don't think it is. I wouldn't have did it, you know what I'm saying? But I can't speak on another person's position because we don't know exactly what happened in that matter. You know what I'm saying? I know I have a little bit of insight on it, more insight than a it's lot of people yeah. do, but that's not my business to tell. You correct, know what I'm saying? Correct. But, it, it just opened a bunch of doors for people to criticize and say a lot of different things when they don't know what they're talking about. And that's why I remained quiet and I didn't say anything about it because, you know, any my, my situation is going to look biased because of my history that I got. Correct. In that situation, you feel me? So I'm old enough to know how to how to move and, and stay out of people's way. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's my take on it. That's what I did. You know, I pray for both of them. Me and Trey are, are friends and, and brothers, you know what I'm saying? We family, so, you know what I mean? I, of course, I'm going to stay stand behind him 100%, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just so, what it is. And, and, and do you think that you and you and Zero could ever get back to a working relationship? It's possible. Anything is possible. I don't hate him. Correct. You know what I'm saying? You know, you ain't never heard me get on this podcast and say nothing detrimental to that dude or negative about him. Yeah. When I came to Houston, Zero was one of the first people I met. Because y'all got a long history exactly. together as well. So this, my relationship with this dude is bigger than rapping, money, or any of that. You know, if he can, if he see that, then it's cool. If he don't, it's still cool. I'm yeah. not, man, I don't care nothing about having no adverse situations with nobody. I got a family to raise, man. I ain't got no time to be mad at nobody. That's childish shit to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We grown. I'm 50. Yeah. So I'm, if I got to fight you to get a resolution with you, then it, I mean, I don't, but what? Exactly. And I ain't going to rap, rap about you, sing about you, I ain't going to do none of that shit. <laughs> none of that. Nah. I just I, I just know you guys did some great work together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I think that's what a lot of time of as a fan you you long for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and so you know that you we've lost the Nipsies and we've lost certain situations that we can never reattain. But we do have certain people that are still here that we can maybe fix it with. But yeah. if if not, we life moves on, but at least at least it's there. Yeah, you know I'm always I mean? I always got love, you know. Yeah. It's always gonna be love with me, it ain't gonna be nothing else. You know, I'm a black man, so I'm not going to be a hypocrite and push and shove on another black man that I know whether I like him or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Me and Zero shared a whole bunch of years working together and shared a whole bunch of personal time together about different things. Yeah. And I ain't never aired that shit out, and I never will. Yeah. Because I ain't nobody business, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to always be love for me whether it's a dislike in the situation or not. I just know after years coming on platforms and talking about it, that's a form of counseling, man. Yeah, real so talk. So you, you have to, you know, express the facts of, I'm not even there no more. I'm not where I was 10 days ago, yeah. let alone five years ago. Facts. So you got to, I think these things need to be spoke on. Yeah. I really do because people be still stuck because somebody's advancement might not be as quick to the draw like yours when it comes to mental. Right. 
Am I right? That's right. So you got you got to be like, okay, well, dang, yeah, that has been a while. Like niggas, unlock it, uh, you yeah. know, move on because we're not even there no more. Nah, I mean, people just got to put things in perspective. If you got kids or family, you trying to get out of a generational curse, and we all living in one because our families are not wealthy. That's right. Would you rather spend your time traveling from podcast to podcast talking about each other? Or finding a way to keep your family from being in situations where they can't control their own destinies because they don't have enough money and wealth and education to understand what's going on. We don't have enough education to know how to get life insurance. That's real. These kids out here with twenty thousand dollar watches on, they don't have no life insurance. That's real. When they get killed, they got GoFundMe's now. That's wild. But it's you real. You know what I'm saying? So the foolishness that is being displayed is showing a lot of ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't fix it without stop somebody stopping what it is, yeah. or stop or stop reacting to dumb shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They don't really matter. Yeah. If yeah. a person write a song about me, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up to the same house I've been pulling up to for for years and years and years, and raise my kids, and keep doing the same thing that I've been doing. Because the, the simple fact of the matter is, once you find yourself where you're not financially enslaved to other people then you have freedom to move around the way you want to without feeling repercussions of making a wrong move or even making a move for yourself and people not liking it. Man. And that's where I'm at. Back in the day, I, I know, well, I've interviewed Mr. Mike a couple of times and uh, he was telling me about he was almost was rap a lot. <laughs> yeah, he I said, remember he, that. He told me that. Yeah. Do you remember that? I remember that. He said, what, what do you remember about it? Because he said, I went over there, but it, it didn't happen. But I went over there and I seen some, and I left. I, I, I On the new one that we did, <laughs> he was like, I didn't stay, but I almost rap a lot. You know, I mean, uh, he came when Tila came. It was, okay. It was him, Tila, and a group called the Hoodlums. Shout out to the Hoodlums, my boy O.C. and and uh, low key, that's my my guys. That's okay, my brothers. okay. So they all came over there together. They ended up signing the hoodlum signed and and Tila signed, and Mike was there, but Mike didn't sign. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't, <laughs> but he didn't sign. But Mike Mike was a real kind of spiritual tapped in kind of cat then. <laughs> really? Because yeah. he's that way. He's, even he's now. been that way. You know, I'm not lying. He's been that wow. way. Wow. I don't even personally know him like that, but I've <laughs> observed him and I know. Yeah, and he That's said he his spirit didn't lead him yeah, that way. If his it spirit is not him, locking in, he ain't doing it. That's doing what it. he said that I day. He you. said he his spirit just wasn't yeah, right. Yeah, he ain't gonna do it. Yeah, but I, I loved his music too, though. Yeah, his he was voice, dope. Oh my God, his voice was so creative. Yeah, you he know, was dope. in his voice, you know, you know, you listen to voices and tonality, yeah. man, and it's like his voice still to this day is distinct, and his music is timeless exactly. as well. So when you go throw his track on right now, it's, it's gonna, gonna bang. Yeah, you gonna feel everything in it. <laughs> Real man, that Wicked album was crazy, man. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. He, t he talked about a lot of different things on my show, about Ice Cube and them coming down to meet him and all kind yeah. of stuff. Tupac came looking for him. I said, man, you were, yeah, he was you were cold, working, man. man. That was cold, man. Man, so what do you remember about those times that you missed the most about those times back during the, the music phase of uh, the, those were the early 90s, uh, mid 90s? I mean, the creative love. Just being in the studio and creating. You know, now it's like, okay, shoot me a track to the email, or let me get in there, I'm going to do it real quick and put a mix on it, and we're going to see if it's a single or not, or yada, yada. You know, people don't take a lot of time to uh, go through the process of creation anymore. Everything is all rush, rush. Yeah, it's all microwave now. But that's life. Yeah. Everything, and people have gotten more lazy. That's the reason why. Yeah. That's why you have Uber and all these other things. People mm -hmm. don't want to get in their car to go nowhere, to go buy nothing, to deal with traffic. Everything just needs to come to yeah. them. And that's that's the problem. Did you ever miss out on an opportunity that you feel like, dang, I wish I'd have went on and done that? Nah. Nothing? Nah. Nothing? No regrets? No regrets. Really? Zero. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, uh, who was that? Let me think of some big, it's it been some big moves. People be like, man, I told them, no, I turned that down. I should have did that. But yours usually come to you. Though. Yeah. Yours come yeah, to you. Yeah, I never had that type yours of Yours different. Yeah. Yours different because nigga coming to you because yeah. he heard something in you and he want that. Exactly. So it's a difference. So yeah. I, I get it. I see why you say that. It wouldn't be no, it wouldn't be no regrets, man. Nah. How, the Slim Thug movement, man, just the, the, uh, the music that you guys created together and the times that you guys shared together, what's different about him than others that you've worked with uh, as far as, uh, and are you good with where he's at right now just from the outside? Yeah, I'm him? good where he's at. I see that he's uh, progressing. 
You know, he's getting older now. We know? all are. Yeah. But uh, his growth and the way that he does music to this day is still good. You know, we just had fun. Yeah. It was always fun with us in the studio. And then we had some, you know, some, some disagreements, some almost fights and confrontations and stuff like that. But that's that brotherhood, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but you, but you notice that none of them situations never would get out. Nobody would never go out and talk about each other once, once they yeah. left that room. When we left that room, we were done. Yeah, yeah. When we left whatever situation, we were done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's, to me, it's nothing like working with somebody and seeing them get to a high point in their career knowing that you had a part in it. And that, that's some of the most uh, intriguing things for me working with Slim Thug and his brother, Rayface. Rayface is like my brother. We talk all the time. When I get mad, that's the ear that I'm calling to get to listen to me <laughs> vent whether I'm right or wrong. And he's going to tell me, man, don't do that. And yeah, I might not like it when he say it, but he's never going to tell me something just to let me hear it. You know what I mean? He's going to make sure that he's giving me advice as a brother on what he think, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. So I got all of that from working with Slim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He always loved them boys in blue. Now yeah. he wearing the, he doing that black a little bit now. Yeah, you, you know, you're an old fella. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Man, so, yeah, uh, did you ever, uh, you know who had the, the, the for me, uh, and I hadn't got him on yet. We talked on the phone a couple of times, man. But J Dog, man, yeah, J Dog always had the power, the potential lyrically to me. But he just all it never just hit right for me. Man, that's but how the it nigga is. bad though. But he never. But the nigga could come in here and do something right now and yeah. star power everywhere. Yeah, but that's how it is with people that have that great of a power, man. When people have that great of a talent, they don't see it, and they don't. They, it don't it don't really factor into them that hey man I really have this crazy talent. They just don't see it and they can't apply it because they don't feel like they have it. I've been in those times where, you know, I had to come to reality and be like, you know what, dude, I'm kind of I'm kind of a big deal. I think. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And if J Dog ever do that, it's over. He's the he's the DMX right now. Cause he good, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, that's what he is. That nigga voice is dope. He crazy, man. bro. You been feel, in the studio the with him? Of, yeah, it's the feeling that he gives. It ain't even, it's the emotion that pours out of that dude's body when he rap. When he rap, every word that come out of his mouth is coming from his entire body. Damn. And it's a spirit and energy in that in them words when he say it. A spirit and energy. Yeah. Man, I, I, I just started thinking about him because I know the nigga bad. I done heard him when he did that first 48. Yeah. And all them times, the phases are, are behind 5% a tent, yeah. The one that never go phones, down. Yeah. This nigga just nigga stupid, he hard. man. He hard, man. And and that's the part where I know, like Texas got, they got some serious situ yeah. hey, situations that'll get you, man. Real talk, man. So, um, yeah, uh, who you liking right now in the music? Who you liking? The new people. Uh, now, you been seeing my boy on there, Bumpy Johnson. Yeah, Bumpy Johnson. I'm, <laughs> I met you, my nigga. I'm on the, I'm on the podcast, letting it be known, Jack. <laughs> if I got to come hunt you down, I'm coming to find you. Bumpy Johnson sound good when he get hey, on that mic, hey, man. Bumpy hard, bro. <laughs> he man, that dude hard. I ain't even for lie to you. Every I, time you put him on your Instagram, I'm like, yo, he nice. Send him to me because it, I think it's the way that he reaches to for from a place where people not speaking like that right yeah. now either. And he make it to where you can feel it, yeah. And it's it's organic, but it's it's spiritual, bro. He got a soul. This nigga can reach and get something that other yeah. people can't get because they ain't been through what he been through. He got that J Dog factor. Exactly. He got that. <laughs> That's it. The yep. boy got it. He got it. And 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 I I'll show would love to hear you and him get on the track. No, we gonna together. do it. God, it's gonna it. be dope, man. Yeah, we That's gonna be it. hard as hell, man. Yeah. So how we doing over here? How boss talk one on one doing, Mister Lee? Man, you know y'all moving and moving, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee, we in here, baby. Yeah, yeah, we in the, we in the building, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think this year, uh, the top of the year coming up, man. We gonna we gonna try to we gonna try to kick the dough in. Hey, it's it, a must. Hey, we gotta we gotta be more consistent. We gotta talk to talk to more people, help more people, do more interviews. Mm -hmm. You think we can top it? Of course. What do you want to see from Boss Talk One One? We got Mr. Lee on the set. What do I want to see? Yeah, what you want to see? Just continued progression. Oh yeah, just keep growing. Man, we gotta get Money Moses back in here too. He be go, he he out of, he be going all the time. Yeah, mm. he coming back though. Believe me, when he come, he gonna have a lot to say. Yeah, <laughs> I don't 
think he ever said with nah, that. Nah, I ain't never said with We always, he be gone all the time. Jail or something, that's my boy. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, do you ever go back down to Houston to hang out, man? Yeah, I got kids in Houston, so I go there. You, know you go down there? Yeah. Cause I be in my mind be like, Mr. Lee at the house on that dang yeah, music. Houston, somewhere. Houston home, bro. I mean, I'm always go to Houston. You you know you you gotta go down there. Gotta, gotta, gotta go to, gotta go there, bro. I mean, it ain't no other way. I can still got seven one three on my name. But you got Louisiana Dallas, so two yeah. times though. Yeah, but Louisiana is is home home. But Mr. Lee home is Houston. Wait, you know, um, ESG and you got both that same thing, y'all. And PMC. Yep. Mm -hmm. You niggas similar. And the small, the, small town, the small town people are the one that goes to the big city and, and we eat. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I just named them right quick. All yeah. three of y'all. Yes, indeed. Niggas just dipped on up yeah, here and moved. Get right to it, Jack. <laughs> you ain't gonna waste no time. How's, how's, how was the ESG thing for you over the years? Did you ever link with him at all? Yeah, me and the ESG partners, man. That's my partner, man. So, I'm just glad to see he that, that he's bouncing back. Man, he went through a lot, man. Yeah. He went through yeah. a lot, bro. Like, like, and he came here right before that, you know, and, and just... Me and Bobo, we sat down with him, man, had a good time. We ate in here, man. You know, we do it. We country, so yeah. we ate, nigga. We kicked it. You know what I'm saying? We, he even rapped about it, nigga. We ain't playing no game. It's different over here. Ain't yeah. no podcast ever had no oxtails and sit back you and have all that. <laughs> You're making me hungry, man. I'm about to go to Sweet Georgia Browns or something. Hey, man. <laughs> Sweet Georgia Browns, shout out, man. Yeah, been over there. Man, to go they to still getting it. Man. They Bro, still getting it. They, to me, they are. I got to go back over there. I, I ain't, ain't never got nothing bad from them, Jack. I got to go over there and check them out. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I, I love all the local restaurants, man, when you think about Sweet Charlie Brown. I like that chicken place, too. What's that one everybody go to over there? Williams? Is it Williams? No, no hell Brutus, no. Brutus, Brutus, man. Brutus. Yeah, Brutus. Shout out to uh, Big Spain, man. Big yeah. Spain be on the show if he comes see me, man. Uh, but, man, uh, how can people get a hold of you if they try to lock in with you? I mean, the easiest way is to get on my social media. It's Mr. Lee 713 on most of them, my my Facebook is producer Mister Lee. I'm getting on TikTok. Follow me on you TikTok. You on TikTok? I'm getting on. I that. got banned the other day, but that's all right. I'm gonna get back. I got to get my coins out of that jack. So I'm going straight to it. <laughs> <laughs> man, I think we did. We, did I get everything? Yeah, I, think, we got, I, mean, I mean, you know, we, we don't out. do this all the time, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? We, we ain't trying to hear it. it. Yeah, we ain't trying to hear it, man. So hey, man, check it, man. Say, man, listen. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. I'm doing that more this year. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys go follow us on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, everything. Join a membership too on our YouTube channel. You can be a member. You can see all those videos. Cause Mr. Lee, you might just get skits. You got to go in that gully to get. You got to be a member to see the full full interview. Cause I'm a, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start dropping them full interviews in that membership. Man. Slicing and dicing and Patreon, free. Patreon as well, man. Yeah. Stop playing, Patreon as well, right? We got all this stuff got to be happening this year, man. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the bosses talk. And we out.